You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a telephone call today from Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The two leaders exchanged greetings marking the advent of the holy month of Ramadan and reviewed bilateral relations binding Bahrain and Turkey in ways of bolstering joint ties in all fields. His Majesty the King wished President Erdogan success in leading the Republic of Turkey for the good of his brotherly people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa yesterday evening received at Safriya Palace the Commander in Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a number of senior BDF officers, and a group of Royal Guard personnel who returned home after carrying out their sacred national duty in the Republic of Yemen. The attendees congratulated His Majesty on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan and wished him abundant health and happiness and the Kingdom of Bahrain for the progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King exchanged Ramadan greetings with the attendees and took pride in the brave BDF personnel. He honored a number of Royal Guard sub-officers with a military medal of bravery in recognition of their devotion and dedicated services in Yemen. He paid tribute to the courageous BDF men's participation within the Saudi-led Arab coalition to restore legitimacy in Yemen and provide humanitarian aid to its people. His Majesty extended congratulations on the blessed month to all BDF personnel and wished them further success. The Royal Court announced that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will depart tomorrow to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to meet the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The two leaders will hold talks on ways to further boost the solid fraternal relations between the two kingdoms and their people, as well as talks regarding the latest regional and international developments. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today a number of royal family members and state officials. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of committing to the outcomes of the Riyadh summit to achieve common interests. He started, or rather stated, that the summit has started a new phase of Gulf Arab cooperation, particularly in light of the security and economic challenges. He added that it is unacceptable not to abide by the outcomes of the summit and that the security and stability of the Arabian Gulf is a top priority. His Royal Highness noted that the Kingdom and the GCC countries do not wish harm upon anyone and that their their purpose is to put an end to what undermines their security and stability or threatens the safety of their people and control sedition and incitement under the cover of media which target the region's security. The Prime Minister emphasized keenness on developing government services and villages to meet the aspirations of the citizens. He directed ministers to visit the villages of the kingdom to inquire about the needs of the people, the latest of which was a directive to visit El Daraz to provide comprehensive services to its people. He also affirmed that the infrastructure and road development projects will add to the government's efforts to reduce traffic congestion, especially with the opening of intersections located at the heart of the capital, Manama, which links it with the rest of the regions. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited yesterday evening the Majlis of the Khazaruni family and the Majlis of Khalid al Sharif. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa accompanied His Royal Highness during the Majlis visits. During the visits, the Crown Prince stressed that extremism does not and cannot have a place in civilized societies. His Royal Highness noted that the extremism and acts of terrorism being witnessed in the world today must be defeated. His Royal Highness added that the world today is united in declaring war on extremism and extremist ideologies that go against the principles of moderation and compassion which the religion of Islam is known for. His Royal Highness stressed that there is no conflict between thought and religion, but what is being faced today is a desperate attempt to exploit religion and commit crimes and spread chaos. 
The Crown Prince highlighted that the Bahraini society must uphold its central values and strong beliefs in pluralism in line with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision for the country. His Rohanis also underscored that the importance of excluding extremism and terrorism in various countries and instead coming together in pursuit of shared prosperity and development. The Crown Prince emphasized that the positions taken by Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Egypt and other Arab countries is not a position against the Emir or the people of Qatar, but a firm stance against the policy of supporting extremist groups. His Rohanis outlined that for many years Bahrain has sought to respond to such actions in cooperation with partners and allies. However, in 2017, such actions can no longer be tolerated. Speaking about the kingdom's economy, His Rohanis emphasized that the kingdom's strong and flexible economy has enabled it to deal with the effects of the changes in the oil market. His Rohanis also added that the kingdom is committed to implementing initiatives that support innovation, creativity and the development of a knowledge-based economy which enhances expertise and high-skilled jobs. The Majlis' hosts and guests expressed their gratitude for His Rohanis' visit and highlighted the instrumental role the Crown Prince continues to play in advancing sustainable development and driving non-oil sector growth.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, opened today a sports hall at Al Ittifaq Club Building at Al Diraz, established by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Minister Hisham bin Mohammed Al Jodar, the Governor of the Northern Government, Ali bin Abdul Hussein Al Asfur, in addition to a number of Shura and Representative Council members and senior officials, were present. During the opening ceremony, His Highness affirmed that the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports has prioritized the issue of upgrading the national clubs in accordance to the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He also hailed the efforts of the Youth and Sports Affairs Ministry in building the sports edifice. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that Bahrain supports and believes in the important role of Bahraini youth as a cornerstone in sustainable development. His Highness also asserted that the new club building will have a positive impact on the youth in Diraz area and will protect them from being used by others in improper purposes. He affirmed that the youth of the area have set the most remarkable example in dealing with those who want to destabilize the security and stability in the region. His Highness added that the reform project of His Majesty the King opened the door in front of the youth to create a better future. He also said that His Majesty the King has great faith in the young people of the region who have great potential to create a future for the kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the, the, the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa supporting the decision of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to sever diplomatic relations with Qatar. He noted that this step is a reflection of the hostile actions of Qatar against Gulf and Arab countries, adding that it is an important step against a hostile entity dedicated to striking Arab stability, supporting terrorism and spreading division. Sheikh Nasser emphasized support for the steps taken by the leadership towards Qatar, which asserts His Majesty the King's keenness on reinforcing national and Arab security. He rejected Qatar's tampering with security and stability and its support to organizations that are trying to destabilize the kingdom, as well as terrorist groups that have caused corruption. His Highness also rejected Qatar's support to terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda, ISIL, Houthi militias and the Muslim Brotherhood. Sheikh Nasser sent a similar cable to the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, in which he supported the measures taken by the government to sever relations with Qatar after the insistence on destabilizing security and stability in the kingdom, interfering in its internal affairs and citing the media, supporting terrorist activities and funding organizations to sabotage and spread chaos in Bahrain. His Highness sent a similar cable to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, supporting the measures taken against Qatar after its violation of all agreements and principles of international law with no regard to values, law, morals and consideration to to the principle of neighborliness or adherence to the principles of Gulf relations, as well as its denial of all previous commitments and support for terrorist groups from which Arab countries have suffered. The Shura Council stressed support for all measures taken by the government of Bahrain, affirming maintaining the country's security and stability and protecting national gains are given the highest priority. The Shura, in a statement, said that the measures taken by Bahrain aimed at protecting its security and stability against Qatar's interference in its internal affairs as it has been backing terrorist groups associated with Iran to carry out terrorist acts aimed at overthrowing the legitimate political system in Bahrain, which is inconsistent with all laws, norms or good neighborliness principles. Earlier today, we were joined by Shura Council member Ahmed Al Haddad, who commented on Bahrain's decision with regards to severing ties with Qatar. We fully support the uh, decision of, of the government of Bahrain to cut off diplomatic relations with Qatar. You know, this is because I think Qatar has been meddling in, uh, and, and interfering, interfering the affair, internal affairs of Bahrain for a long time. And this has to be stopped. And I think there have been a lot of efforts behind the scene for a long time to convince Qatar 
to stop interfering in the affairs of Bahrain mm -hmm. and supporting certain terrorist elements in the country. Mm -hmm. Besides also the media, you see, Al Jazeera has played a very important role in investigating, you know, in um, uh, trying to uh, interfere in the internal affairs of Bahrain by, uh, you know, spreading uh, false news about the, uh, the, the situation in Bahrain for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been uh, known to everybody in this regard. So the action against uh, Qatar is just justified because uh, it's, I think, a threat to the security of the country. Mm -hmm. And as per, as, as per the United Nations Charter and principle of inter international law, a sovereign state can take any action or measure so as to protect its security and citizens from foreign threats. And this case is applied to Qatar. And uh, we believe that uh, Qatar has been trying it, this for a long time. And uh, Bahrain is very much justified in taking this measure along with other uh, friendly countries like Saudi Arabia, U United Emirates, Egypt. Mm -hmm. And I think this action or decision has been taken after very careful thoughts mm -hmm. and coordination and consultation among the concerned parties. Mm -hmm. And um, let me say one thing here. The people, you know, of Qatar, these countries, they have no ill, you know, intentions toward the people of Qatar. They are our brothers and sisters. But there is, of course, their government, which has taken certain stance that affects the unity, the security, the welfare of the GCC countries and other Arab countries. So I think this decision is uh, right in the right direction and to stop Qatar from interfering in mm -hmm. the affairs of mm -hmm. these countries and to prevent Qatar from financing and supporting certain terrorist groups like, uh, you know, ISIL, like al Nusra, and of course the, the, there is the brotherhood, the issue of brotherhood, mm -hmm. which Qatar has been supporting with weapons and finance.